Now then, here we are on the Isle of Mull and I am going to show you my micro camper, micro kitchen. And what I've done is, I've basically hung it off the back doors just to save space inside, so I've got plenty of free space. Hello, come here. Oh well, I've now got another bluey dog. What's your name? Hey, we'll call you Red, because you've got all this red band on you. You are gorgeous, aren't you? So with my tiny little van, what I didn't want to do is consume all the space by banging the kitchen inside. And also cooking inside isn't great because you get all the smells and the gas is burning and everything like that. So I wanted it to be on the back door so then I can open this up and stand here and then cook. So I tried to do everything just in this little space so once I'm in the middle I can just rotate around and it just works. So let's show you, I've got a few little uh, gadgets and tricks that I've done and I'm sure there's a couple things here that you will be interested in. So a quick walk through everything and then I'll show you how I made it. So we're going to start with, I have got all my cutlery and bits for cooking and everything here and these are just in these pouches and I attach these by putting this metal bar along there and as you can see it's just a little bit of velcro. So that just keeps everything together and obviously close to hand. I've got a bin here and what I've done with this, I've put it on a magnet so that just allows me to sit that there and if I don't want it there I can then move it elsewhere. On this side I have got my storage, so in the bottom here, whoa, I've got my Yorkshire tea and there's a little coffee maker, all my tea bags, um, just extra little bits and bats. I've got a couple of wedges here which are to hold the doors open because they just sort of sit in and stop the doors shutting if it's windy. Baby wipes, some oil and then look at this, this is pretty cool. So a tiny little um, pouch there and inside I have got all my herbs and spices. Because when you're out and about you don't need that much and to be fair even that's probably overkill but at least it gives me quite a lot of choice on what I need to do with my cooking. That's all stainless, I've banged a hook on that side, I've got my water here, which uh, if I just open the door, that is just a very simple tap system on there. And the best thing about this is I've just added some paracord to the top and watch, it just clicks straight in there and if you want to release it, you just use the door release and obviously I can put it on this side as well. And that works in exactly the same way. Right, the best design in this, I've got to say, is on this side. Now it might look pretty simple, but basically I've got my gas canister here, which is mounted in this, which is just a stainless steel sort of pot with its hanging thing. And that came from Ikea actually. I just had to adjust it slightly to make it work, but you'll see that in the video in a minute. And this is just a standard table. The good thing about doing it in stainless is it gives you some strength so it allows you to be able to hang more off it. So if you wee just flip this up, just clicks into position and that is absolutely rock solid now. Undo it again and there we go. But look at this, so this is a really clever design. So I've actually used baking tray here but if you look I can flip that off and inside I have got my chopping board, that sits exactly in there and that just allows me to now do my chopping, feed the pan and all that. And all these are very simple stainless steel baking trays and to make this actually fit and stick, that sits in the middle, that drops on there, I've actually put a big magnet on the back and that just stops it falling off. Cool eh? <laughs> So I've also found the most ideal stove for camping in a little setup like this. I've got loads of tiny little stoves which are lightweight for doing the wild camping up on a mountain and I've got some of the big double dual burner things but that's just overkill for a little van like this. So this is what I've found and this is from Ridge Monkey and it is the Quad Connect Pro I think it is and if you can see that a nice sort of solid base there and we have got four legs that fold out and it is the quad connect because obviously this attaches to your gas there we've got a little piezo igniter as well and then on this side this connects to a second one so I can actually have two pots going at the same time now if we look at this as you can see we have got little adjustable legs 
So when you're in a van, nothing's ever flat. So I can obviously now level it out. So if you can see, we're a bit rocky there, drop on the legs and it solidifies it. So absolutely perfect. To go with the stove, I've also got a couple of other items. And this firstly is a little windbreak and it's designed to fit perfectly around that. We've got these rubber feet on here which just come off and on and some spikes there so if you're out and about you can just shove that straight to the ground. But I need to protect my little kitchen table so that <laughs> somehow will sit on there. So that just allows us a little bit of wind protection which is good. I've also got some of the Ridge Monkey pans and these are square which fit perfectly on the actual square stove and the best thing about this is we'll just flip it open you get a few little spatulas and everything to go with it but it's completely non-stick and you can disassemble this turn it into two so you've got a little mini frying pan but when you are cooking inside at all having two sides and a link together it just means that you can flip everything and also you're not getting all the splashes of your sausages and bacon flying about all over and it is just enough for one. So that's their sandwich toaster. And I've also got a deeper pan of theirs as well. And that again splits. So we have got a griddle sort of side on that. And then obviously this one you can just use as like a deeper pan. That's the handle in there. Oh yeah, to go with it as well, we have got an odd shaped kettle. What shapes a kettle? <laughs> Always round, but we have a square one here comes the little lid, two little handles there, and that just sits on there perfectly. So obviously I can make me cup of Yorkshire tea. <laughs> so the second burner, if I just bring that to that corner, pop that one in there, and we've got a little gas connector here, and that links to that one, you just push it together, and we've got another igniter on that as well. And that allows you to just use one gas bottle for two burners pretty damn clever come on Al so that's my tiny little kitchen in my tiny little van and hopefully this is going to serve me well for years to come on all my adventures honestly I'm well happy with it anyway if you want to uh, know how I've actually built this continue watching we'll see you in a bit it's a very windy and wet day today so to keep the job moving I am going to do something inside so I have decided to take off these two panels which sit against this back door and come up with a design to make a kitchen out of this. That is my kitchen. So we're gonna have like a five hob burner, microwave, double oven, everything just hanging off this. Somewhat along those lines anyway. But currently this fiber board, whatever it is, just is flimsy and weak. It's already got holes in it and obviously I can't put this back on. You can carpet these to make them look a bit prettier, but they have no function in that at all. So what I'm gonna do is, is swap these out for some metal, and I'm gonna use some stainless steel because that is the ideal material to use for a kitchen because it's wipeable and you do not need to treat it at all. I'm gonna use these as a template, and then hopefully we can make something of it. Who knows, we'll design it as we go on. So we have two cards for the rear doors, the big door and the smaller door, and I'm going to use these now to template onto some stainless steel sheeting. So I've got two pieces cut already, which were cut on a guillotine, and what I'm going to do is now just draw on here with the panel, let's just pop that on, and then I will cut this out with a grinder. So I'm hoping that there is a square corner, which it almost does look like on that corner there which means I won't have to cut four edges, I just need to cut two edges and just try to get it somewhat like. There might be a bit of trimming up with a grinder anyway just to make sure that it is exactly right, but I think we're good to go with that. This is one and a half millimetre thick stainless steel sheeting and it is well strong enough to hang off whatever I want. The two problems I've got though, I need to attach this to the actual door itself so that's a strong fixing and then whatever I attach to this has to be obviously done in a strong way too so I'm going to be drilling holes and putting some sort of fixings in there but where there's problems there's always solutions so I will definitely come up with an idea to sort that out 
One of my other concerns is the fact that I'm adding extra weight to my van and all these little additives do make a grander total which obviously puts the full weight of your van up and you will have a gross maximum weight that you can actually have for your van. So just something I am thinking of because this is probably, I'm going to say, four times heavier than what those cards are. Probably even more. Anyway, let's get on with it. So let's get this lined up on the two edges which seem pretty square. So no play whatsoever, we're going for perfection. And that is how I roll. Keeping it flat down. So there we go. So let's get the grinder out now and chop this line. Well, I'm definitely putting these on after past experience. I've been to hospital twice to get metal filings pulled out of my eye with a needle. So glasses always go on and some air defenders and then we're happy. Well that was fairly straightforward, obviously you've got a straight blade trying to cut a corner so you have to sort of work your way around like a 50 pence piece, but once you get there you're not far off and all I need to do now is swap my disc over from a 1mm cutting disc which is that one, and then if I put a flap disc on like this, it's just an old one which I'm going to get a little bit more life out of, I'm just going to smooth all this out and just make it as perfect as possible and then we'll see how we get on with that. I'm cock-handed that way so I need to flip you around. So you can go over there, like so. I'll bang these back on, make it safe, that's better. Right, I've sanded all the edges down just to make sure that there's no sharp bits, but it might need a little bit of titivation. So I'm just going to now pull off this plastic sheet and then we'll see what we're dealing with underneath. Oh, that is pleasurable. There we go then, beautiful. It's a little bit shiny for my liking. It's not like a polished finish, but I just sort of feel like I want to scuff it up a little bit, maybe with some wire wool, just to make it look like it's been used for the last 20 or 30 years. And there's also a little bit of metal that I just need to grind off in a couple of places. Well that is beautifully smooth now. Absolutely Bob on, or Dave on, <laughs> or John on, I don't know, why do I say Bob on, I always do. Anyway, let's take this out and we'll offer it up against the door and see what it looks like. So, very exciting stuff. Apart from, it's absolutely persisting it down. Maybe a cup of tea and a sandwich, let's do that first. Onto the other rear door panel, and again we've got a pretty decent right angle here, so I'm going to pop that into the corner of this stainless steel sheet, and then we're only cutting two edges, not four. Same process though, I'm going to take a pen, draw around it. Once we have a line to cut to, I'm going to take my one millimeter cutting disc and cut it out, like that. Then once we've got that cut out, smooth it off and make sure it's pretty decent with the flat disc. 
And then, just to finalise it, we will get some sandpaper and give it a real good sand off so it's not sharp at all. So, there's no point me filming that because it's pretty boring, so I'll do it really, really quickly. Awesome, eh? Look at that. No sharp edges at all, nice and smooth, and it is pretty much perfect like the other one. The only thing is, I have just nicked the face of it just slightly with the grinder on the front there, but you won't see it from your house, so you don't need to worry. I've just got to wash off the edges as well, if you can just sort of see little black line on the edge there. That is just where the plastic's melted to it with the heat of the grinder. So it will scrub off, no problem, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, let's go off of these up and make sure that they fit okay in the van. Right, you ready then? Let's have a look. Look at that. That is beautiful. Honestly, that is just going to be amazing. So the next problem is I need to attach this to that. My original plan for this back door here was to actually cut out the line all the way around here and get rid of all that central section and then use that as a bit of a cubby hole just to put a few bits and bats to do with the cooking side of things. But it just seems a bit of a faff doing it. And also the fact that I'm going to use these stainless steel panels if I was to then make a box that then sat on the rear side of this which fit into the actual door it would have to be welded on and if it's welded then this is going to warp and it will look like a dog's dinner. So I just thought I'm not going to bother and I'll keep it simple. So to attach that to there, I'll just show you there, it looks beautiful though doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some rivet nuts which are these, if you can see that, you can't see that can you? <laughs> Anyway, these are just a little insert with a thread on the inside of it. Basically, you need to make these holes, which are the original attachment points, big enough to fit this in, which is actually a 9mm drill bit. Then these get clamped in with a little special doofer tool. And then you've got a thread just to put a normal bolt in. And I have got some little dome head bolts there, which will look quite tidy and obviously on here if because they, they are evenly spaced out it'll look pretty good because it's almost like it's just sort of studded all the way around. The rivet nuts need a 9mm hole so I have got a drill here with a 9mm bit in it and all I'm going to do is just drill these out. I think currently these are about 8mm so it's hardly anything. And that is it and then if you can see now that will fit in. If you can Notice though, on these rivet nuts, there's about a millimetre little lip there. So my plan is, is once these are in place, there's going to be a tiny little air gap all the way around here, which potentially will allow moisture to get into the actual door. And I don't want that. So I'm going to put some sort of seal around here, which I can just then clamp the actual stainless steel onto, and that'll seal it all up. I've got my magic tool ready, and I've got a six millimetre thread on here already. So we'll spread her legs, <laughs> I'll say her, she's got a dangler, maybe we won't go down that line. And then this is the rivet nut and we're just going to screw this on to here. And that should just slip on perfectly. And then once we're in place with this, it's uh, the leverage of this that's going to actually cause this to grip onto it. So we'll pop this into this top one here, keep it nice and square and all we do Give it a little tug, unscrew it, and then we have attached the rivet nut all ready to go. So with just a normal 6mm, uh, sorry, M6 bolt, that will now screw straight into there. Perfect and rock solid. I need to now transfer the positions of these holes onto my new plate 
but there is a slight issue. You'd think it'd be straightforward. The problem is this board has got these sort of holes in it which are bigger to take the plastic clips and there's a little bit of wiggle room on there because it doesn't really matter how perfectly aligned it is. With the new metal board it has to be precise because obviously if you drill a hole and it's a couple of millimetres off or even one millimetre off it will not line up with the thread that's behind. So I need to make sure that I've got these perfect. So what I've done is I've put this board on and I've just put a screw in the top there and I've taped it on in a couple of places in the most central position so it sits perfectly there. And then I've gone round with my magic eyes, a 2020 vision and I've just eyed it through to see exactly the position of the back thread to where it lines up with the uh, board here. If it's out by a millimetre or two millimetres then I've done an arrow to draw the direction that it's out and then I've put a number by it, one or two. So then when I come to put this over the top of my board here, I can then just mark and know exactly where I need to put the dot for where the drill needs to drill the hole through. Woo! That took some explaining. I hope you understand, but anyway, let's go get on with that. Okay, right, I'm happy with that then. So with each of these I've put a mark on and the direction of the movement of the dot where I need to put and this one is two millimetres that way so I can see exactly where the centre is and I'm going to just use my magic eye again and go over two millimetres. I've got my ten dots ready to drill and I've chosen a six and a half millimetre drill bit which is only just bigger than the M6 bolt and it's easier then to go bigger if needed, so if I need to take it up to a 7mm, it takes a second. You can't reduce the size of a hole. But I'm going to start with a smaller drill bit, because this has got a sharper point on, so I'm going to be a bit more accurate with the actual placing of this. And prior to that, I've got a screw. So I'm going to use this as a bradle because I don't have one. So I will just pop it over the hole, give it a tap, and then hopefully I'll just give enough for the drill bit to actually sit into. Oh, another thing, I don't want to drill onto this worktop. Let's find a piece of wood. Hellfire, stainless steel is out. Swap that one out. There we go, one hole. If that fits through. Got a little bit of play on that, which is good, but the head obviously will cover that. And if I do need to go to a seven or even a 7.5, I'm pretty sure I will be able to. And there we go, done. I might just get a file and just take off any burrs, but apart from that, that is ready to fit. So let's go see what it looks like. I am well happy with that. It fits like a dream. I've just got a couple of holes which still just need boring out a little bit further because it's about half a millimetre offline. So I'm going to take it off and go do that. But this is rock solid and it's going to do exactly what I want it to do and that is to hang things off it. So I'll be able to fit things like some shelf brackets, possibly something like this, just as a bit of storage. Just honestly, perfect, well happy with it. Anyway, I am done for the day, it's wet and I am hungry so I'll see you tomorrow. I've been busy, I've got this one complete and obviously dry fit it for the minute because I still need to do a couple of jobs inside the door. One of the jobs I've already done which is fit a reversing camera which is just attached to the outside and then all the wires are actually in here and then the wire are fed through here and into the actual cab itself so then I can obviously fit it to the stereo which gives me the screen for the reversing camera. Uh, what else? I need to actually do the insulation in here and also I need to find a way of actually opening the door from the inside. Now I've been using my finger to lift up this little lever section at the bottom so I'm thinking I might need to make some lever to allow that to happen from through this actual metal plate or I can attach something and maybe have a pull but anyway I'll work that one out. I've also just temporarily shoved on a bracket here which is um, one of these click black brackets 
and I've just attached it to one of the uh, bolts that I've already put in and then that just allows me to see what's going to happen because my plan is to get an old baking tray something like this and use that as a table and on here I'm going to put my gas stove so I should be able to then fold it down and then bring it up as and when I need it. What I also need to think about is actually having my gas bottle. So I found something really cool. Look at this. So imagine this. We have got a table there and I found this thing which is round and that is going to attach on this side here. And the best thing about this is, look at this for a fit. Absolutely perfect. So all I'll do is I'll cut some of this metal work off, get rid of that, and then I'll attach this onto there and I'll be able to then feed my gas stove and cook on this side. That is cool, isn't it? Really cool. I've uh, taken this panel back off because I need to insulate in there, so that's going to be my next job. I'm just using the fan heater to completely dry out the door because we do not want to trap any moisture in there at all. It's also good because it raises the temperature of the metal work which just allows the sound of the in mat to stick better. You can also use a fan heater just for actually heating up the back to make it a little bit more tacky anyway so it really does help make it stick well. It is a little bit awkward to do with this. Especially because when it sticks it really does want to stick. Make sure it's pressed on and it's going to stay there. I don't want things peeling off and then rattling about here. Oh uh, dear, fiddling around in small holes, eh? Good, a couple more bits. Just one on that side maybe, and that should do us. Onto the panel now, and I've given it a wipe down with a degreaser, and then we're gonna stick on some sound deadening insulation just like that and hopefully that will help take out that tinny sound then what i'm going to do is get some of this which is self-adhesive and i'm going to stick this all the way around the edge let's see if i can show you I'll do it across my chest so if i stick that on all the way around and then when i tighten these bolts up it's going to compress this and then hopefully form a pretty tight seal around it so no moisture will get in and obviously it'll help with the sound deadening as well that up a bit, left a bit, right a bit. Give it a nice press down. So let's have a listen now. <laughs> wow, what a difference. It's like a front door, is that? Yes. The only problem with having this on the back though is when I come to put the rivet nuts through here to attach a few items to it, it's gonna get in the way slightly, so I am aware of that, so when I come to drill my holes, I might just have to put like a tool in and just scrape a little bit off on the other side. I'll work it out. Well happy with that though. Right, let's try fit a bit of this stuff around the outside now. I'm gonna inset it in about one millimeter. Look at that, proud as punch. That's gonna seal it up absolutely perfectly. So what I need to do now is give it a final dry out before I seal it all in. And I also need to cut some insulation to go in there as well. So I've got some scissors. So let's just cut a chunk to go in here. And we'll just sort of feed this in as best we can, pack it solid, and then hopefully that will help with the sound editing, but mainly keeping me nice and warm in here. contortionist. Oh, I'm too old for this. <laughs> right that should do it. I do feel it is a shame that this space here isn't going to get utilised because it's crying out for some little sort of cubby old shelves or something putting in there. So on my next van build I'll be cutting this out all the way around there and I'll have something set in there with maybe some sort of drop down table and then like racking behind it with maybe all these spices in or something like that. Definitely. Anyway, to this van. <laughs> 
Right, all insulated. Now it is time to fit this beautiful panel. And I think this is a great idea of having the seal around the outside because then it acts like a vapour barrier. So it's going to stop any moisture getting into that door. There is a hole there which I've noticed, but I'm going to get a rubber grommet to fit in that. So that'll seal that off as well. But apart from that, oh, there's another one down at the bottom as well. And those are access bolts probably for the hinges. So obviously you can't just block them off properly. Anyway, let's get this on. You must be bored now watching me just put bolts into holes. <laughs> I'll bring you back in a minute. Last couple's tighten up. And we can stand back. Or hunch, hunch back and have a look at it. That is just beautiful. And that is not too bad having the sound bedding in <laughs> compared to the one next door. Awesome, absolutely awesome. Looking at these folding shelf brackets now and I need a way of attaching the shelf to this. Because I'm going to use a thin piece of metal, it is going to have to be done in a slightly different way to normal, because normally you just screw through these holes with a decent sort of solid wood screw into a piece of wood planking or whatever the worktop's going to be, and it'll work fine. I can't do that because as soon as I pierce this, you're going to have a sharp spiky bit sticking out the top. So what I've done is, as you can see there, I put in a nut rivet, and one in the middle there, and I've just got one more to do. I had to bore the hole out a little bit bigger just so it would fit the rivet in, and also that end one, if you can see, I've actually had to move it up slightly as well because it actually snags the contraption as it works. So, let's just do this last rivet in here. Just pop that in place. Got to sort of line it up. It's a bit awkward, this one. Give that a tug. Unscrew it. And there we go. We have three full rivets which I can use to actually screw into. I might only use the outer two anyway, but I'm going to attach the shelf using these, which are an M4 flange top bolt. And they're really low profile, so when you're sort of wiping clean on the uh, shelf itself, they're not going to sort of snag your wiping equipment, whatever that may be, or your fingers. And if you can see, they just fit in there perfectly. And obviously, just give it a bit of a tighten up onto the actual metal, and it will work a dream, he says. <laughs> This is my cooking stove shelf, and as you can see, I've attached the brackets on both sides. I had to start at this nut here, uh, so I basically put a bolt in and offered it up, and then I've actually put a couple of marks on to where my holes are gonna be to put the new nut rivets in there. And also here, I've drilled through already, but that actually goes onto the inside skin of the actual metal of here. So if I put a rivet in there now, It'll clamp both together and I'll never get this panel off. So I need to take the whole lot off, drill a bigger hole on the inside and then um, attach the nut rivet to the outside shell and then we can take the whole panel off with these things attached all in one. Woo! Double check, that is perfect. Pop print all. Give her a squeeze. Undo. Simple and beautiful. So hopefully this now will fit in that slightly bigger hole. Let's 
perfect. And that now allows me to attach the shelf to this and anything else to this and the whole lot will come off if I need. Because sometimes you do need to get to the back door to mess about with things like changing number plates. Obviously the door can have a the door handles can have a bit of an issue sometimes as well, so you've got to tighten these up. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to get a bigger van. This is too small for messing about doing this work in. I'm just gonna attach this shelf to this back plate. And then once this is on, it can pretty much stay on, I think. Right, that is attached. There's just the final one which attaches through the top one there, which obviously goes into the existing there. Let's see if it works. It looks good to me. Look at that. Click, click, undo it again. <laughs> yes, look at that. That is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And a mirror as well. So I'll be able to trim my beard. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. How to make a kitchen in a tiny van. <laughs> This little contraption is just from Ikea and it's like a little storage thing to put bits on. You obviously hook it onto some sort of rack system. Anyway, I am turning it upside down. And it's gonna drop in there because I want a longer section here to attach to my stainless steel. So I've pre-drilled two holes in here and now I'm gonna go cut off that bit and across the top there and get rid of those and obviously then that will hopefully just sit in there nicely. The good thing is, if I cut that off as well, you can see, I'm going to end up with a hook. I'm back after using the grinder, so I've made my perfect little hanger for the pot. And with it, I've got one hook that could be used potentially, and then this piece, which I don't know, could be used for something, but don't throw them away just in case. I think I'm just going to keep it in line with this. And the lead of, can, you can't even see that, can you? <laughs> you can't even see that better. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this line going through, I think. So I think the metal work can all just look in trim together. Yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna drill a couple of holes in here and then we can attach that on. Just double check in, I've put two dots there where I need to drill. So I'm just gonna put two smaller holes through first, followed by the nine mil ones. Done. Yes. <laughs> yes. See if she works. That's going to be spot on. Absolutely spot on. Look at that, my ultra cool kitchen. Honestly, I think it is brilliant, is this for me? We'll flip this up and straight away, it feels like a workable space. We've got this gas canister mounted at the side here. So the hose off this is going to lead to my sort of camping stove and then I'll be able to cook on here. If I've got it outside, then obviously I can put some sort of windshield around it. So I might design and make a windshield for this as well. Um, I've used a upstand here all the way around this because when you park up, you never park perfectly flat. So you put something on a flat table, it's just going to roll off. With an upstand, that doesn't happen. That's thinking, you see. So it's just great because you can just shove all your stuff on there. So you'll put like your bottle opener for your beer your wine, whatever you call it, corkscrewy thing, so you can drink your wine and your lighter and any other little bits and bats, it'll just get chucked on there and it'll be kept safe and sound and it won't fall off into the depths of the underneath of the car. I'll be cooking outside for most of the time when I'm doing my van life expeditions because for me, it will be sunny all the time, honestly. But for those odd occasions where it may rain, <laughs> which is uh, very often in the UK, 
I have designed this to be at a height that I can actually use it inside because my bed is going to be underneath this so hopefully it'll just slide over the top of my bed and I can continue cooking inside. Next up then we have got this stainless steel IKEA storage container. This is going to be brilliant for me because I'm going to have all my essential cooking items in here. So cooking oils, we'll have herbs and spices, salt and pepper, all that sort of game. And the good thing is I'll have it mounted on one side and then I can just pick anything out of that, turn around and shove it in the pan at the other side. So it should work very well. But the best thing about this is, and this is one reason why I have source to this is the fact that it is demountable from its cradle so if I was to cook elsewhere rather than just at the back door I can then go cook on a rock down by the beach or something I can pick this up carry it with me and then because it's got a flat bottom we can stick that by where I'm cooking and obviously use it there So there's the cradle looking nice and clean. I've just smoothed off all these edges here just to make sure that there's nothing that's going to sort of snag or cut you when you're messing about with it. Looking good, eh? There we go. That does not take long adapting those. And obviously the fixings are going to be hidden by this. So you can't see it. Perfect, eh? And then the bonus, we've got these little hooks which are going to be just perfect just for hooking stuff. Let's go. I've just marked a centre line on here and I'm going to line that up with this bolt which is the centre of this. So, keeping that pressure against that, without moving it, let's see, mark these holes. Rivet nuts to put in next. So I'll just screw these on. Ready? There we go. Yeah, it's good, is that, isn't it? Right, next job. I'm going to take these out and pop those hooks on there and there so it gives me just that little bit of extra storage. So we'll take this one out first. So again, I've degreased the back of this and I've just preheated some of these just to get them a bit tackier. I'm going to stick this on in the desired spot, which I've already marked. Look at that, it made to fit there, wasn't it? I've got this fully prepared now, I've got this seal all the way around the outside, a bit of sound deadening on, and now it is a case of fitting it to the door. I think I've done everything inside the door that I need to do. So let's hope this is the last time I have to do this. Let's make sure that's in the right place.
Well, hopefully you've enjoyed my little micro kitchen build in my little micro camper. And hopefully also you have got an idea or two that you might be able to put into your own camper. This one in particular is pretty cool and I'm very proud of it. Look at that, movable chopping board. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. You can join me on Instagram and if you want to contribute to the channel at all, you can buy me a coffee in the buy me a coffee link and also you can join the Patreon. I'll also put a lot of links in the description for the Ridge Monkey gear because I think it's definitely worth checking out. Anyway, I am going to get myself onto the next adventure. So, from me and the beautiful Red. Red? Red! <laughs> He's gone. We'll see you another time. Take care.